Something bad is beginning to unfold in economically developed nations. The more that I think about this, the more I feel like we might be totally fucked. Young men are abandoning colleges at a rapid rate. An NYU professor says fewer men going to college will lead to a mating crisis with the US producing too many broke and alone men. This is really not good for society. Like it or not, a four-year college degree is required for entry to the upper echelon of America. Women with college degrees don't want to partner with men who don't have a college degree. The mating inequality that's going to come out of this dearth of men in college poses an existential risk to our economy and our society. As women continue to excel in education and the workplace alike, an ever-increasing number of the male population are withdrawing. In the last 10 years, the number of men between the ages of 18 and 30 reporting no sex in the last year has tripled. And the worrying thing is that this could so easily lead to a violent storm. The most dangerous person in the world is a broke and a lone male, and we are producing too many of them. The future for relationships between men and women is starting to look bleak. If men don't kill themselves, they're exiting education and society and family life at the highest rates ever. Women are frantically pursuing careers only to discover that they're unable to find a partner that they're attracted to and then jump on meds at 40 years old. And then the people who want kids can't find a partner that does as well. Birth rates declining, faith in the leaders and the news organizations non-existent, and everyone's just about sufficiently sedated not to notice or care that it's going on. That's a precise and accurate summary of how the West has declined and will collapse, yes. Fuck. How did we arrive at this point? Hey guys, it's your girl Melanie, and I came across this video that this intro was so scary, right? I'm like, Jesus, because as you guys know, I do dead um, commentary or dead reactions. I'm less of a reaction channel, I'm more of a commentary, an opinion channel. And so I came across this and I, I just saw the first 10 seconds and I was like, okay, I need to talk about this. But this is what I have been ringing the bell about, ringing the alarm about. And when we talk about the, you know, when we talk about the dating crisis and we talk about modern women and Western women, and we all know what's going on in the streets, you know, if you've had your ear to the ground or boots on the ground involved in, in the streets, then you understand that we are in an extreme crisis. And the only people that seem to recognize where this crisis is coming from, the actual root cause are the men. Women overall are just blaming, you know, men aren't keeping up. Where have all the good men gone? Um, men are dusty, men are broke, men are on our level. I don't want to date down. You know, they, they have this very me centered narcissistic focus on self and their individual results where I see men as a collective are understanding the broad strokes, the, the, the macro view versus the micro view of, of self. And we all know that it has stemmed from, this is the result. This is the poisonous result from feminism in the sexual liberation. And over the decades, as more and more of this has seeped into, uh, into our society, into everyday, everyday life, we are now because of social media one and dating apps, it has by order of magnitude, I, I don't know what order of magnitude by, by a lot, it has expedited the downfall of the West, the downfall of the nuclear family, the downfall of mating and relationships here in the U S and, and so until we start addressing what is causing this and it's coming from multiple levels within our society, not just the dating apps and social media. Yes. Those are where you see the most, you see it is in your face, but what we're seeing it from where I notice it is in all walks of, of, of it's at all levels of our society. So we're talking about governmental policies, the universities, the school systems, corporations, even how uh, money is being handled and given out towards women and how men can't even, I, I've had so many young men tell me that they aren't able even to get a school loan to go to college. They don't qualify because they aren't minority enough. They aren't oppressed enough. And even when young men are on these campuses, and this is what you don't hear too many people talk about, is that the reason why a lot of men have stepped away from going to college is because most of these colleges are very anti-male. They're very, there's a lot of toxic misandry and feminism that is accepted. It is the general current. It is what 
And it undergirds almost every facet of university life from what they're taught, what, what uh, campus groups are allowed to be on there, to um, how they deal with each other, how the different sexes deal with each other. That men have been, now it's not even a matter of making women equal to men. It is now about oppressing men, silencing men, and, and, and keeping men, putting their foot on men's necks. And then on top of that, men are not seeing the benefits of going to these universities, one where their manhood, their masculinity is going to be constantly under assault and challenge. But then once they leave the university, they're not able to find jobs in their selective field that pay enough. And then they have their saddle with college debt. They're saddled with these different, with, with, um, these loans or college debt, or they're not able to find a job in their chosen field. And so it's illogical for a lot of men to want to put themselves through that. And so this is where, and you will not hear too many people acknowledge that this is the crisis comes from this toxic feminism that has shut down men and boys from wanting to pursue higher degrees and to go into these things. And women don't care because they feel as though now they're getting all the benefits. They're, they're getting all the, the rewards for this. But we know we are now starting, women are starting to see the consequences of these things where they're wanting, they don't want to be strong and independent anymore. They're, they're tired of being girl bosses. Now they want to live their soft life and they're upset that they can't find a man that, uh, or a man on their level. They're like, why aren't these men keeping up? And they're starting to feel the effects, which we know the modern woman only cares about things if it directly affects her. She still is not going to take accountability for her own actions and beliefs and hold any hold these institutions or anything else accountable for what they've done to men. So it, 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 it's, we know that. But now they're just at least starting to wake up and question, question these things because they're miserable. They're sad. They're getting ran through by Chad and Tyrone. They can't get these men to commit. They, do, uh, they thought a degree would make them more valuable to men on the sexual marketplace. And they're starting to, it's starting to, starting to, to, to clock in that, okay, none of this is working. And you even are seeing on TikTok now, women are like, why did you other women ruin this? Who told us that we need to get a, we should get a degree and work these corporate slave jobs and, and, and be unhappy. Then they're not able to, um, they're not having the families that they truly want. It, you know, when they were younger, they didn't want a family. They didn't want these things, but now they're getting older. They want it, but there's no men around. The men that they want don't want them or they're already taken or the men are just bypassing these women because they don't see value in being with a woman who was a feminist, a misandrist her entire life or very, had no compassion or empathy towards men. And now they want, she wants a nice guy to come clean up her life or come save her, or rescue her from her, her poor decisions growing up. And now those men are gone and men have the options of the entire world in terms of exploring their options when men from the West in particular, they can go out to different countries, more traditional countries and find wives and girlfriends, but the Western woman, she has no options because we, and we know why because they, they do not have options. They can't go to the same countries to find a man one, cause they're going to want a man who makes a certain amount of money. And in those countries, the men do not make as much money, especially here in the U.S. The U.S. dollar is very strong or Western dollars are very strong compared to these more traditional countries. Then two, they, we also know if these men are come from more traditional countries, they're not going to want a Western woman from the U.S. Unless we're talking about passport bay, but all right, a <laughs> green card bay. But anyway, guys, I said a lot. Let's keep going. I talked a lot. <laughs> in the not too distant past, marriage preceded sex and young women were sold by their families to eligible men of equal or superior social status. These young women had little say in the matter, and once they were married, they remained dependent on their husband's earnings until they died. The lives of both men and women were extremely tough. Most men suffered grueling days in the fields, earning very little money, and most women suffered grueling days in the home, earning no money. Women tended to their children, but also to domestic duties, which back then were far more difficult and time-consuming. The technologies we take for granted today, like the vacuum cleaner, electric washing machine, dishwasher, and so on, had yet to come to humanity's aid. Even when the Industrial Revolution was in full swing, many households, especially those in rural areas, still didn't have running tap water. But everything changed in the 20th century. 
In the United States, the 19th Amendment to the Constitution, ratified in the year of 1920, permitted women the right to vote, and a series of technological advancements followed, which began to turn the tide. Chief among these developments were the electric washing machine and the birth control pill. The introduction of the pill caused a tremendous social shift. Unmarried women were able to have sex without getting pregnant, which is enormously significant because you didn't have to get married to have sex, <laughs> or you didn't have to risk an abortion. Control over the reproductive process in particular meant that women were free to pursue educational and economic success for the first time in history. Son of a bitch! We struck the mother low. Marriage became a matter of choice as opposed to a social or economic necessity. By 1970, 50% of single women and 40% of married women were participating in the labor force. And 1981 was the last year that more men than women graduated from a four-year undergraduate program. Now, 60 years after the release of the birth control pill, young women are steaming ahead. In the UK, women in their 20s earn, on average, 1,100 more per annum than their male counterparts. And they're doing way better than men on the educational front. What's happened is that males have fallen rapidly behind females at every stage of the education system and in every advanced economy in the world. On pretty much every measure you can look at, girls are ahead of boys. And that's increasingly true even in subjects like math and science. Nobody predicted that once girls and women caught up with boys and men, that they would keep going and that we would now have a bigger gender gap in higher education than we did 50 years ago, just the other way around. After centuries of men dominating the economy. I want to say this as well. They can't just put it like women are, women are just achieving on their own merit. The policies, the governmental policies, corporate policies and university policies and have undergirded women, have pushed women to the forefront while they have oppressed men. So it's not like this natural uh, uh, evolution of women achieving. No, the, the, the propaganda that has pushed women towards the forefront and has, and has pushed men down and they don't want to recognize that part of it. So I just wanted to put that out there, you know, even in the scholarship programs and the, the different, um, the different uh, initiatives that they have going out, they're mostly geared towards women. So you can't just say, oh, well, men are just falling behind because they're less than. No, 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 no. There is propaganda and agenda that has been behind this, but they don't want to recognize that. Most of the job growth is in industries where women traditionally work, and those jobs require more education. The latest piece of data is that women are dominating college enrollment. In a few years, two women will earn a degree for every one man. Guys, that's not that important. A lot of these, I mean, you have underwater basket weaving. A lot of the, women are getting degrees and useless, getting useless degrees for the most part. They're getting degrees and things that are in the arts and humanities for the most part. So they're not going into STEM. Well, now it's called STEAM. They're not going to science, technology, engineering, and math. I'm not including the arts. They say the arts, it's like, that. that's what the A is, the STEAM. And, and they say the arts is now, um, okay, well, graphic design and architecture, which that can still be in, 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 um, in engineering. So I'm not really sure why they, anyway. So with STEM, the women are not getting the degrees and things that matter. Women are not doing the jobs that actually push the economy and the infrastructure. Okay. And they're not the ones that undergird, undergird the infrastructure here in the U S that's for sure. It is men who do trade jobs, technical jobs that actually run this country. So as bad as it seems, it seems men are not getting these degrees because men are more logical. They're not getting these worthless degrees. They're going into trades and fields where it doesn't require one or ones where they have more job security because these jobs are, are needed. They're like, it's not, it's, they're not these fluffy kind of jobs, these cushion jobs that a lot of women go towards where, that can get eliminated by AI, which we're going to see how many of these women are going to have all these great jobs and be ahead once AI really starts to take over. AI can't run the pipelines. AI can't be a bricklayer. AI, for the most part, cannot do a lot of the, the majority of jobs that technical and trade tradesmen do. And so we'll, we'll see, you know, how this balances out, but across the board, women are still not getting the degrees and things that matter. And they're coming out in debt. They're saddled down with debt. So we need to tell the other side of the coin. They always like to put these, this fluffy things where they're getting these degrees. Yeah. These degrees are worthless, especially in today's economy.
In fairness, many young men are dodging college with good reason. The typical graduate of a four-year university is going to walk into their first job with $26,000 in debt. And all too often, that college degree, which was supposed to promise a stable middle-class life, is falling far short of expectations. About a third of the nation's colleges leave students high and dry, earning less after obtaining their degree than the typical high school graduate 10 years after graduation. Somewhere around 40% of college grads are underemployed. That means they're working in jobs that do not actually require a four-year degree. But the fact remains that adults with a bachelor's degree earn an average of $2.8 million during their careers, 1.2 million more than the median for workers with a high school diploma. Think about how many jobs that have nothing to do with college still require a degree. And from there, that's just the entry point. Media, economics, politics, law, business, almost all professional jobs today require a college degree. It's simply a bare minimum to even get a shot at competing. Ultimately, it all depends on the individual college. Again, they're in, when they did those statistics, they're talking about actually traditional labor force. They're not like, you don't need a degree to get a job in STEM across the board, like it to, to even to work at Facebook and work at different companies, you don't need a degree to do it. You just have to have work experience and proven skills. Like if you're talking about traditional jobs, a lawyer, a doctor, yes, you're going to need that. But when you see these statistics, don't think that they've pulled all the data across the board and all the, all the fields. They're talking about very specific fields when they pull that data. Okay. So I don't know why they, I don't know why, of course we know why they're going to twist, they're going to twist things. So if it's a narrative. And student respectively, a declining male presence in higher education suggests the men are on the road to becoming less competitive in the economic sphere than before. And that's bad news for the dating market. Why? Because women are hypergamous, which means that they're biologically wired to select sexual partners who are as competent or more competent than they are. Hypergamy is a good thing. For if our female ancestors had been inclined to have sex with and reproduce with men who were unable to defend or acquire resources for them, our species probably would have died out a very long time ago. But see, the thing is, when women become the higher achieving sex in the social order, hypergamy prevents many men and women from finding suitable mates. Because a large pool of women find attraction in only a very small pool of highly promising or successful men. I just want to know why it is so hard to find a guy that I'm attracted to that isn't an asshole. Where did all the good men go? Can someone tell me where I can find a decent, loyal, funny, good-looking guy around here? This reality is playing out on modern dating apps like Tinder. Data reveals that men swipe right on about 60% of female profiles, whereas women swipe right on only 4% of male profiles. On account of being scarcely available, Guys, the new data shows it's 1% now. I'm actually going to do a video next on this new uh, Tinder data. These few desirable men are free to set the rules of the dating game. And as the renowned evolutionary psychologist David Buss said in 2015, research overwhelmingly shows that men harbor, on average, a greater desire for sexual partner variety. So what you see, where there is a surplus of women and a scarcity of men, is more casual dating because the men get to make the rules. If there are fewer men than there are women, the women have to compete and the only way that they can compete is by playing the game that the men want. This sexual paradigm has long been referred to as hookup culture and it often sees attractive women moving from one short-term relationship to another, unable to tie down the men. Not just attractive women, we have women on all levels of the Fibonacci scale, you know, who are, who are in hookup culture when they plus size, it doesn't matter. And it's because a lot of the top men or men are able to knock these women down. They're easy pickings. And then women believe that because a guy who's a, say that she's a four or five, and then a man who's a seven, seven, eight, nine knocks her down. She thinks that's her new level. So then they live in this delusional bubble and think that they could run now. I look good enough to obtain a main man like this. Like when they say, yeah, I've dated millionaires and I've dated a guy like this and I've dated that you didn't date that man, he was using you as a skeet receptacle, but you label it as dating. You were hooking up and giving away your body for free. There's women today where they don't want to fix a man a plate. They don't want to set a man's plate, but they will, they will fix her. She will fix her coochie for him. She will give that away for free, but fixing him a plate or doing anything for a man is beneath her. It's misogynist. It's a, it's misogyny, but she'll let him take every part or every hole in her body for pleasure. And she doesn't see a problem with it. So it's not just, you know, this hypergamy is women are delusional in, 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 
and and really crazy in the way that they their logic is flawed. There's a lot of kinks in their logic that does not make sense. And they even they they contradict their own desires. So guys, that's a whole different discussion. I just have to put that out there. They desire to committed long-term monogamous relationships. I don't know how I always end up in the exact same situation. It's always great. And I feel like these people I me, I'm like, wow, like I'm finally clicking with somebody. And then it's always the same thing. They're not in a place where they are looking for a relationship. They have other things that are more important. And I'm just like, oh. like, I'm never good enough. Every single boy. So she has her answer. You're not good enough for that man. For the men you are going after, you don't understand why you're in that situation. It's not, and a lot of them will blame men or they have a pity party, but they won't make logical decisions. They won't do an internal inventory and say, okay, if, okay, if none of this keeps happening, I keep giving away my body to these men, most likely a Chad or Tyrone or a high value seemingly man, and he's not picking me for relationship. There's always a reason why. And then you say, am I not good enough? You, you're ass, she's asking. Asking that is rhetorical. She doesn't really think she's not good enough. It's almost like she wants people to say, oh yeah, you're good enough. Of course, it's just these men. No, you're not good enough for them. And we've got to start having reality. Women do not want to be in reality. They're quick to tell a man that he's not good enough for her. Women are quick to call men names and call men names, tell them they're dusty, they're broke, they're not on her level. She needs to level up that he's, you know, she's dating that with him, he, I will be dating down. But they have to understand that for most of them, if a men are not committing to you, it is you. If you're having this repeated pattern, you are reaching too high. You are shooting above your pay grade. These men look better or have higher status and they can get better looking women than you. And generally, if they're not picking you as well, because it's not just about looks that just gets you in the door, but personality wise, you are not there. Why is it so difficult for women to be honest? Women say they want, they're living in their truth and they want the truth, but they don't want to be truthful to themselves. And they're certain not truthful to each other because to be truthful to each other means that they have to look in the mirror they can't even they, they have to live in this lie this bubble this lie but they're miserable in it they're depressed and they're asking stupid questions where are all the good men gone men are not asking that men are just like there are no good women i'm exiting the dating market going my own way and whether that means i'm not dating at all or i'm just going to be a passport bro they're finding solutions they're not sitting on the internet crying about uh, oh woe is me this is why men are winning now and men are able to go out and find more traditional women. They're not sit again, they're not sitting on the internet crying and, and, and living in delusion. Where I go on a date with, yeah, I want a relationship. Oh, I'm just looking for the right person. Like, I'm so loyal. Like I just want a relationship. We have a really good date and then I just don't hear from them again. Or I do for like a couple of days and then they ghost. Like I've seriously fucking had enough. I'm gonna be single for the rest of my life. There was a time when if men wanted to have sex, they had to marry you. Whereas now, the price of sex is Netflix and chill. So the standards have changed and we've allowed them to change because we wanted to prove that we could do it just as bad as the boys. And I think that that is backfiring. The result is a quite distorted sexual marketplace. If you have more lax rules, around casual sex before marriage and birth control, which means that you can have sex without fear of having children. That means that women can have sex with high value men who are perhaps higher value than they would usually have access to, which then skews their goals moving forward about who they want to be in a long-term relationship with. Because when they were sleeping with these really attractive guys, they thought, okay, this person is attracted to me because I'm on his level, not knowing that men drastically reduce their standards when it comes to casual situations. And if you do have this experience with this guy and it was a fantastic experience and you're head over heels for him, you want to replicate that experience in the next sort of relationships you have. But if that guy that you're dating doesn't quite reach that standard, you're never going to be happy. Men, on the other hand, are struggling not only to find long-term partners, but even to have sex at all. Sadly, many have become too apathetic and devoid of confidence to even bother trying. I feel like possibly my self-esteem is like so low that I've subconsciously ruled out the possibility of ever like getting a girlfriend or whatever. Generally speaking, the only people who are significantly benefiting from this state of affairs are the limited number of high-status men. That top slice of playboys, they're having simultaneous relationships all back-to-back. -back. It's great for them in the short term. 
is rubbish for the other men and it's also rubbish for the women because you end up with women who actually really want to have loving, intimate, monogamous relationships and they don't feel like they can. If other groups are in fact gaining from this condition, it's primarily those in the middle and upper classes. Studies have suggested that hookup culture is in fact predominantly a middle class phenomenon. And the further you are up the socioeconomic scale, the more likely you are to be able to enjoy and, you know, get something out of the dissolution of sexual norms. But the further down the socioeconomic scale you go, the more likely that is to result in chaotic lives, eking out an existence with four kids by four dads and a fly-by-night partner who beats up your children when you're not looking. It's not obvious to me that that's somehow intrinsically better than a slightly meh marriage to somebody you stop fancying after 10 years. As things stand, loneliness and frustration reign in an increasingly atomized world. Our society is cultivating a densely populated underclass of men who are destined to remain penniless and alone their entire lives. And those are the guys who cause problems because they're faced with possibly being zeros in the evolutionary race and so they are willing to take big risks in order to catapult themselves up the status hierarchy and have a chance to get into the marriage and mating market. And beyond the threat of violence is the problem of population collapse. Probably the biggest myth that exists right now is this overpopulation myth, when in fact we have a population collapse problem. Like, people have no idea how fast the population is going to collapse. If fewer people are reproducing, next generation you have fewer people to reproduce as fewer people are reproducing, yeah. and it... The lifespan is increasing. That's the only reason why the population of Earth isn't plummeting, but it will plummet. The birth rate in the U.S. has been below replacement rate since, like, 70 one or 72. Japan actually went down by 600,000 people last year. So you're saying people need to be having more kids? Yeah. I mean, I'm sure you know a lot of people who have like no kids. Like how many kids do you guys have? I don't know. I got no kids. I mean, that no, we know none of. None of you guys have any? No. What the fuck? At the present rate, there'll be a striking absence of the young people necessary to uphold our society in 50 years time. And so, if the mating crisis in our society isn't fixed, it may be a very dark road ahead. So guys, as you can see, this problem is multi-layered and it's more than just a dating crisis, a mating crisis. This is this is going to hit multiple levels of society. And especially when we talk about population growth, I mean, we can go on and on the layers that is out there. But guys, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this. Let me give any insight that you may have. Um, I also will be linking the original below. So make sure you check that out. Give that channel some support. Um, I thought this was a great, uh, a great little kind of documentary on this subject. But anyway, make sure you subscribe and I will see you guys on the next one. Bye.